Hi friends, welcome back to Cosplay Vicar. R2 is approaching about six months old since I got into a state where I was really like, he's an R2 now. Uh, he's been on a number of events and he's doing really well and the crowds love him. Uh, and uh, R2 has been uh, pretty much working consistent, which is great. A couple of little wobbles now and again, but it's been working so well. Uh, people keep saying to me, so Chris, uh, what's next? Uh, what are you going to do to R2 next? Uh, and the reality is, right from the moment that I built R2, uh, I, I wanted to go for a weathered look. I wanted to go for an R2 uh, that looked um, as screen accurate and beat up as, as I thought, you know, you know was realistic. Um, and I'd be really happy with the dome, but... There's something, no matter how much rub and buff you use, no matter what you do, a 3D printed dome will still have the air of 3D printed. And there's something about it and it's not the same as an aluminium dome. So all along I've been thinking, some point I would love to update my dome. I'd like to get an aluminium dome, but aluminium domes are expensive. They're not necessarily easy to get hold of. Uh, sometimes they're you know, import tax and that kind of thing. So I thought that was going to be something that would be, you know, way down the line. But friends, it is time to update R2's dome. I, I do want to have an aluminium dome on R2. There are a number of ways that you could approach that. Um, but here in the UK, I think one of the best options for us is Lee Towsley, who uh, has uh, been a part of... Uh, Lucasfilm, droid building for Lucasfilm. He has been making droids for uh, all recent kind of Star Wars projects. Uh, and his domes are amazing. I just think they look great. And, uh, you know, you can't get something that's more with a screen lineage, I guess, than the person who's been making uh, domes for R2-D2s that have now been in the movies. So it's become time to to swap out the dome. And, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, a few months ago, I uh, found a guy who had a Lee Towsley dome and he had bought it, I think, somewhere around 2016, 2017, I think. Uh, but it's literally sat on his shelf since then. And now was the time for him to get rid of that. He knew he was not going to finish that project. Uh, and I was able to get hold of an aluminium dome. So today is the day that my Mr. Baddeley 3D printed dome comes off. And I'm replacing it with this aluminium dome, which uh, I have been working on over the last uh, number of months. Uh, lights have all moved in here already. So th when this comes, it's a it really is just a raw dome. Everything is, is still attached through little connectors and you've got to go in there with a little, scissors, um, a little saw and kind of cut it all out, sand it all down, uh, prepare it for painting, paint it, put it together. Um, uh, you know, uh, aluminium dome, Aluminium dome, aluminium dome, aluminium dome. The radar eyes, the hologram um, bits here. This that's three D printed still. So these are all three D printed uh, on the resin printer on my PLA printer. These are resin parts as well. Uh, and uh, I'm really pleased with how this dome has turned out. Now, the nice thing about Lee's domes is he numbers them and he signs them. So here we have Lee's signature inside my dome over here. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, this is numbered 16. So I don't know when he made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like da da da. But this is number 16 of his domes. So I was over the moon because I think when I was looking at the forum, I think I could be wrong. It's somewhere up to about 50 domes now that, that he has made. Uh, I think could be wrong, but. Uh, this is number 16. So I was super, super happy to get my hands on, on this dome. Um, it looks fantastic. And there's something about an aluminium dome uh, that just really adds some kind of credibility to your R2. Um, there was a few things that I was concerned about with an aluminium dome. One of them was if I was driving over a rough surface, 
uh, the dome might bounce a bit. I didn't know if it would sit on R2 the way that my 3D printed dome had done. So what I ended up doing was I put in some magnets and these magnets basically connect with magnets on the Lazy Susan uh, and it sits now quite content uh, and those magnets kind of hold it down and I've not had a problem as of yet. Uh, I've been on two troops with this dome, testing it out, and I've had absolutely no problems whatsoever with the dome jumping. Uh, one of the troops that I did was a very, very rough road. And I thought, gosh, how's R2 going to cope? He coped beautifully fine. And uh, actually the dome behaved itself beautifully as well. It, it didn't hop around or bounce around at all. So one of the questions that uh, people ask and I asked was, how easy is it to fit an aluminium dome to a 3D printed droid, particularly a droid that uh, it, we're using the Mr. Baddeley files? The answer is so easy, so, so easy. I've not had to do anything to R2 at all uh, for the aluminium droid to fit. All I did was uh, I've glued in this black ring and I worked out where the screw holes would be. I've got these screws that kind of stick up, these bolt uh, tops that stick up, R2 fits on there, and then you've got the uh, magnets that hold it down. I just worked out where those were, drilled the holes out, of this ring and then glued the ring in. And uh, one of the things that you have to do is just make sure your ring is the right height so it does not rub against your droid. So that was a bit of trial and error, but pretty straightforward. If you've built an R2-D2, uh, you, you know uh, what I'm talking about, the, you know, the distance between uh, this ring, uh, this edge and the edge of R2 here. A little bit of trial and error, but within a few minutes, sussed that out, knew exactly where it needed to go, marked it and glued it and had no problems with that at all. Uh, what was nice was I could decide what distance I wanted, what gap size I wanted between the body and the dome so that it not only span well, looked even, but also was, it was, was not too big a gap, but enough that it was nice and clearing or, you know, all the way around. So all the lights have gone into R2. So R2 is lighting up as usual. And then we put R2's dome on so we can see the dome on here. There we go. Fits on nice and steadily. Looks great. Uh, so aluminium dome, 3D printed body, works really well. If you are thinking about upgrading your 3D printed dome, I would say, I can't comment on all the other domes, I don't think they'll be any different, to be honest, but this Lee Towsy dome just works so, so well. There was some alterations I had to make around some of the 3D printed parts. For example, the hole here for the hologram, this hole here is slightly narrower than the 3D printed part. So I had to resize that part uh, to fit, but obviously you don't want to resize it so that the hologram eye won't fit in there because you want to keep that same one-to-one. -one. So I had to do a little bit of adjustments on the holder, uh, but I did that uh, by uh, taking it into sli a slicer and just kind of fiddling with it a little bit to just make it fit at the bottom, but kept the top the same width so the hologram eye would fit in there. So pretty straightforward. I would encourage anybody thinking about doing this to do it because it does look awesome. I am so pleased with R2's aluminium dome. Now, a few folks have said to me, Chris, what are you going to do with your old R2 dome? The plan is with this to take all of these blue parts off, the radar eyes and these little panels, I'm going to respray them red. And what I want to do is have a dome uh, that has lights in it, exactly like this, uh, but in red, so that when I, a little bit like the R5 droid, you know, uh, with the white and red head, well, this would be silver and red. So that if I go to an event and there's another R2-D2, 
I have another dome that I can swap on because you don't want more than one R2 in an event. So we can swap the dome out and we can put on my alternative dome, uh, which would be silver and red and uh, the rest of the body would be blue. So the idea would be that that would be an alternative for R2. I'm not sure what name we would call him then. I have to come up with a with a new name. Uh, but that, that means that this dome has a continued lifespan uh, in, in alternative ways. So there you go updating R2's dome really pleased with it I think it's far superior to my original dome uh, Mr Badley's files are amazing I was really pleased with what I'd done there uh, but when you get to make that little upgrade to an alley dome you you just don't look back so super pleased with that so friends I hope that is an enjoyable update for you that if you're thinking about updating your droid to an eye dome it might give you a bit of confidence to do that as well if you are wanting to do it and you've got any questions very happy for you to drop those into the, the comment section and uh, i will just respond uh, as you put those in uh, but trust me friends you will not look back or regret updating to an aluminium dome at some point be content with what you have got but at some point you might want to upgrade so there you go friends don't forget subscribe and and uh, like the video comment in the video as well that is really useful but friends there will be more videos coming of r2 out and about and i look forward to seeing some of you at events later this year have a great summer enjoy building and we'll catch up soon